bonjour and ahoy. I'm Roger Hilton, Defense and Security Research Fellow at Globesec, coming to you from Vienna, Austria. From forest fires in Siberia to snowstorms in Texas, climate change is here and flexing its destructive muscle. In addition to all of the impact climate change is having on society, there are massive national security concerns that is forcing governments and organizations like NATO to future-proof its policies. With me today to try to add some clarity and why urgent action is needed on this is Aaron Sikorsky, Deputy Director at the Center at the Center for Climate and Security. Hey, Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Roger. Glad to be here. Thanks. So, Aaron, listen, we have a new sheriff in town in Washington with the Biden administration who has made climate change a priority, which is supremely refreshing. Before we get into all the issues about climate security, a little piece that went unnoticed was that he asked for a global posture review at the Pentagon. Can you explain briefly why this is important? Sure. So the goal of such a review is to ensure that the military footprint is sized and supports the president's foreign policy and national security policies. So it matters because it's an effort to align, right, the strategy with the primary tool of our policy. Mm -hmm. uh, so to that end, I think the review is going to be driven by the new interim national security strategy, which was released this week by mm -hmm. President Biden. And that really emphasized, you know, these transnational cross-cutting issues, such as mm -hmm. climate change. Uh, so we expect the Global Posture Review will take that into account and hopefully will draw on climate security risk assessments to analyze where to expect increases in natural disasters, for example. Mm -hmm. And so that should lead to a concurrent increase in future humanitarian assistance, disaster relief missions, and we should posture our forces in such a way to manage that. Yeah, that's great that you've sort of given us the 35,000 view about why that's important. And it goes without saying that I think it's fair to expect that climate change and climate security will be featured into it. Recently, uh, we held the NATO Globesec Dialogue where we learned about uh, an executive order that the Biden administration had ordered about sort of a comprehensive 120 day review at the Pentagon implementing climate change and climate security. So 120 days is not a really long time for an institution like the Pentagon to get it in ordering when it comes to simulation and wargaming. So Aaron, from your perspective, what do you expect this study to find? And also more importantly, how fast is the Biden administration and his team gonna be able to implement it? Yeah, you know, Roger, that's a great question. And you're <laughs> right that this is a huge requirement, right? And a tight timeline for the department. I, I think they can meet the goal, but the, the important thing is the integration must go beyond this report, right? The report isn't the end in and of itself. It's just a starting point to then institutionalize uh, these issues across all DOD planning. Uh, well, I mean, safe to say Secretary Austin and Jake Sullivan are going to have their plate full, but and I like that <laughs> sort of the long term horizon, because while you said that, you know, you hope this report outlives two or five years uh, and really looks down the line, think that there are islands, you know, uh, in the Pacific who are at a certain point going to be completely engulfed uh, in the short in the near future. So, I mean, the impact, the implications of it are, are quite uh, urgent at the moment. So let's hope for the best. The last question for you, Aaron, is we're here in Central and Eastern Europe where maybe the, the, the topic of climate change and climate security doesn't resonate as much as it should. Can you explain to us why this is also an important that people here in the region should also be focusing on between the nexus of climate and security? Sure. And, you know, the, the easy answer is right there. They're going to have no choice because climate change is coming, whether we like it or not. Yeah, well said. The question is, will country... Countries and militaries be prepared to handle it. So will you make investments now that can prevent more significant costs in the future? But I think when, when I think about it and I think about the security risks, I usually think of two buckets, right? There's mm -hmm. first is the direct threat to military and civilian infrastructure. So this is flooding of military bases, yeah, erosion, sea level yeah. rise, or it's extreme, yeah, or it's extreme heat uh, on troops uh, that, that impacts force readiness and operations. And as we talked about before, the humanitarian assistance aspect that's going to just increase in the in the coming years. But the second bucket, and I think perhaps more concerning, are the risks posed when climate change intersects with other security dynamics. And here it's important that I think countries aren't asking, is climate change more important than other issues, but instead how it intersects. So it isn't, is climate change more important than China or Russia or nuclear weapons, right? But how does it amplify, affect, or exacerbate those threats? And I think it absolutely does whether it's fragile states, right? Um, places where climate change contributes to political instability or places where it contributes to competition and conflict between countries. I think looking at say Chinese or Russian behavior through a climate change lens is a really useful way to analyze 
how these threats intersect. Why is China doing what it's doing? Why is Russia doing what it's doing? How does climate change impact and shape that? If you don't bring that into the conversation, you're going to miss uh, key, key issues going forward that impact security. Well, I mean, I think your bloodness uh, is is a tactic pretty much well received here in Central and Eastern Europe. And unfortunately, you know, listen, you're, you hit it, uh, you hit the nail right on the head. If the culture is slow to change about, you know, why they need to be doing it, you know, normally it's always a shock uh, of a massive event that sort of spurs innovation and spurs a change of behavior. And, you know, I just hope from my perspective, and I think we're in agreement that it doesn't come to that point where something so devastating has to occur for it to be taken seriously. But like you said, uh, it's here, whether we like it or not, and it's better to be preemptive in preparing for it uh, than being reactive uh, when it's too late. So, Aaron, thanks so much for sharing your time for us. I think in the short time, we covered quite a bit of ground. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll check back in after this Global Posture review to see if you can chip into that as well. Great. Thank you so much, Roger. Have a really great day. Enjoyed the conversation. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Aaron. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.